Talk. I am Evans Apia Kisi, the host of SEPSA Talk. SEPSA is Center for Better Society Advocacy and Research Africa. SEPSA Africa is a non-profit organization that believes in a better society for all. We in SEPSA Africa believe that a better society begins with you and I. Hashtag, a better society begins with me. For more information, please log on to www.sepsaafrica.org. Please follow us on the various social media platforms, YouTube, SEPSA Talk, Facebook at SEPSA Africa, Instagram, SEPSA Africa, and Twitter at SEPSA Africa. Like always, today, we bring you another interesting discussion on the topic, which do we fix first, the country or ourselves? In the last few weeks, fix the country a hashtag has topped the number one trending issue on social media, particularly on Twitter and Facebook. This social media uprising in Ghana calls on government to address a number of issues, including high unemployment rate, high cost of living, corruption, police brutality, insecurity, bad roads, and the likes. At the same time, a counter fix yourself first has also emerged, calling on citizens to fix their own attitudes first. This counter protest calls on Ghanaians to be honest, law abiding, ensure good work ethics, be disciplined, etc. On SEPSA Talk today, we discuss whether fixing ourselves first will translate into fixing our country or fixing the country first is the way to go towards national growth and development. And to help us deal with such an important issue are our own Mrs. Akosia Jima. She's a doctoral researcher in law. She holds Master of Social Work at Carlton University, Canada, MA in Human Geography and Resource Department option at the Western University, London, Canada. She also holds LLM in Diplomacy and International Law from the Lancaster University, England. She also holds BA in Human and Resources Development at University of Ghana. Her expertise lies in foreign policy, social policy, international relations, geopolitics, human rights, and international law. She's one of our regular panelists, and I must say, we are pleased to host you again. Welcome once again to SEPSA Talk, Akosia. I thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be back. Always, always happy to see you all. Thank you. Great. And our next guest is Dr. Louise Amprako. He's an agricultural scientist and a consultant. He holds PhD in agricultural science from the University of Kassel, Germany. He was MSc in sustainable international agriculture from University of Göttingen and Kassel in Germany as well, and who is Bachelor of Science in agricultural science from the University of Ghana. Masi, it's a pleasure hosting you for the first time. Welcome to SEPSA Talk, Dr. Amprako. Thank you very much, Evans. Thank you. Great. And um, like we do always, today we are also streaming live on Facebook. And like I always say to our fellow Sepsarians, don't forget to share your comments and your questions with us. What do you think should be fixed first? Is it the country? or ourselves. Now, I would not waste any time. I would like to begin with you, Akosia, first. I mean, I, perhaps the reason also is that I have seen that you have written a lot of articles towing towards the direction of calling for fixing ourselves first as a people before even thinking about you know, fixing the country or fixing leadership, if you would want to 
you would want to say that. And, and I ask, why do you hold that view when majority of Ghanaians feel that the responsibility lies with the government to fix the country before this would then translate into fixing ourselves first? Why, why this position, Akusia? Thank you very much for the question, but I also think I've been, uh, what I wrote probably has been misunderstood. It has also been misconstrued. Mm. Uh, first of all, I would like to know what they mean by fixing the country. I would like to know uh, uh, for, because you need to identify what the problem is. You need to be able to identify the root causes of the problem before you can even talk about fixing. Fixing what? What's the meaning? What's the actual meaning they're trying to portray? That's the first question. Second question, I do not believe they are mutually exclusive. So I'm, I, I don't necessarily hold to the view that do this first or do that first. I do believe they go together because the collection of the people in the community or in the country make up the country. So you cannot separate the people from what's going on because in my mind, the leaders are selecting from the people. I do know those people in power right now, years ago, they also demonstrated the same way because to them, the leaders are the problem. People forget to know that the leaders are part of the society. And so there's something wrong in the society. Personally, I hold the view that there's a lot wrong with the way people are raised in Ghana. Discipline is not necessarily taught, even though they would like to present themselves as such. So to me, the very foundation of the, the men in which people are raised is problematic. So to ignore that and start talking at the top is, is really ignoring the root causes of the problem. And so the cycle will continue. Number two, people, are, and I, I still don't know what exactly they mean, okay? So to maybe, me- maybe I should so, help you with what they mean. So what they mean is that there are a lot of challenges as we read in the synopsis. There are issues around corruption, bad roads, and, and a whole lot. And what, what they are calling on the government to do as people who have been elected into positions to take responsibility of the nation, people are calling on the government to fix these problems. So, so this is what they actually mean. They mean that government should fix the socioeconomic problems that we face as a people. It is very simplistic to think that way because it, and it's very easy to just chant and say stuff like that because my, my um, investigation shows that many of these problems they are pointing out to you started right after independence, all right? And even during colonial time, uh, many of these, the root causes, some of the factors actually lie within the colonial structures by the destruction of the social and uh, other traditional or other um, traditional institutions or social institutions. The destruction of it, people are ignoring that. The role of the colonial system that actually taught people about corruption, it's been ignored. And, and again, they're talking vaguely. How can you solve problems that have chronically plagued the country? For 65 years, you start shouting that it should be resolved right now, right here, by one administration. And please permit me, and I know that Guineans use sentimentalism and sensationalism, mm. and they also follow the media a lot. My, let me give you a little rundown of, of where some of these problems start from and what are they even talking about? I don't even, I still don't know. I mean, they can shout slogans, corruption, what have you, but corruption started right from independence, from Kwame Nkrumah's time. I know people adore him and so they don't wanna have anything negative, but I'm not into that. I'm not into the politicization, I'm into the facts. The facts are that right after independence, most of the, uh, the, uh, the what, what's that called? Some of the problems, Let, let's even do overview of why is Ghana not developing or why does Ghana have the problems they have? The reason being, we depend a lot, I've already mentioned colonial structures that destroyed our histories, destroyed our past, and that have actually, we had to start again. And uh, 
every country across the globe that face the colonial uh, uh, structures or institutions are facing similar problems. Mm. And so when we get up and we start to compare with Germany, we don't have the same histories. We compare with Canada, we don't have the same histories because even though places like Canada, Australia, um, uh, USA, New Zealand, those were also colonial projects, the, the systems were different. These are the countries where the whites settled. They were settler countries, whereby countries where we were brown and seen as, as less than. We were colonial projects in the sense that we were used as slaves. And our role was defined at the time. Our role was to produce raw materials. And so our, our, our very history was destroyed at that time. We were sort of made to dislike our skin color our hair texture and our colonial, the post institution, educational institution is still colonially based. Our legal systems are colonially based and I, I won't have the time to go into all okay. details. Yeah. One thing I wanna say is the problem started from right from slave trade in the 1400s and colonial times, the manner in which we were even situated started that. Number, number one is that. Number two, right after independence, uh, Ghana was at uh, that time in the 1400s, I believe, or um, uh, I believe 18 something cocoa was introduced in Ghana from uh, the Americas. At the time of independence, the country was in a relatively stable economy. Hmm. Kwame Nkrumah used the cocoa production at the time. Ghana produced 50% of the global, um, global cocoa production. Kwame Nkrumah um, uh, has, uh, started to use the money to, to build industries. He was ambitious at the time, but shortly after independence, somewhere in the 1960s, cocoa prices fell. When cocoa prices fell, the revenues we were getting started to decline. And right in the mid 60s, we started to experience problems. Mm. The, the so-called industrial thing he embarked on started to fall apart. Uh, and so um, by the uh, 80s, and I, I wouldn't like to kind of jump too much quickly yeah. and quickly. What I like to say is he took loans. He began to take loans around that time to make up there. Uh, and then what happened was the loans, then the industries that he was supposed to use cocoa, he depended on loans. By the 60s, cocoa prices dropped, motivation dropped, um, uh, smuggling went on, and then uh, the very fundamentals were destroyed right from there. After that, corruption exacerbated uh, the problem, and that is one of the reasons he was overthrown. So corruption, low revenues, and what have you, industry started to fall. And then, um, uh, what's that called? Um, since, since then, it's been a cycle of poverty and currency evaluation around that time. Eventually, during Bouzier's time, they decided to devalue the currency. Mm. And when they devalued, the purpose was when they devalued it, the cocoa um, pro, pro, um, price, uh, the price of cocoa will be attractive. So then they can, people can buy. Then when they did that, it had a counterproductive effect by making the way we service our loans more expensive. Uh, and then we began, it's almost like a cycle, imports. And because the colonialism made us dependent on imports, then the prices of buying from outside, because now the colonialists made us as a, uh, as a, a specialty is producing and exporting raw material. Mm -hmm. Our prices have fallen. Now we have to spend more to, to gain the imports, the thing, the consumer goods. In the meantime, our prices keep on falling. Later on, people were smuggling into neighboring countries. Our revenue dropped further. People got more discouraged. Eventually, by the 1980s, we were near collapse. Right. Uh, at some point, mm. our inflation was 50%. By 1981, our inflation was 116%, right? When Mr. Rawlings came, he claimed that people were just because of corruption and what have you, started to kill people. Eventually, he found out it was not just corruption, but it was all these forces. So people, when they're sitting outside, they have a myopic 
idea about why they just blame everything on corruption. Yes, no doubt corruption happens, but there are so many elements. Just back in summary of your question around why I do not think that these things are separate. I feel, like I said before, it is the people in the society that raise the people, that raise the leaders. Uh, the other part of it is it wasn't Kwame Nkrumah alone that collapsed the industries. The industries were collapsed by corrupt practices of the people that worked in there. Later on, many of the, in uh, the uh, industries were collapsing because people are corrupt. They're, they're low productivity. They want to be paid without earning, without actually producing anything. So you, to me, you cannot separate. You cannot separate the people's habits from it. By, uh, let me just summarize how the numbers are. Uh, Ghana's share of the cocoa prices was, a, uh, was one third uh, in the 1970s. By the 1980s, specifically 1982, 1983, it had fallen to one eighth of the global share. Let me talk about mineral production had fallen by the 80s by 32%. Uh, gold production had fallen by 47%. Diamond production had fallen by 67%. Mm. Manganese by 43%. Uh, bauxite by 46 percent inflation was as i said more than 50 percent a year right from the 60s into the 70s all the way and by 1981 116 percent mineral usage uh, uh index uh mm. in terms of minimum wage minimum wage if you index it it had fallen from 75 percent in 1975 and in 1981 it was 15 percent so, so in my mind, uh, if you look at, uh, and as I mentioned, productivity was low, government resources had dropped, and then that led to the coup in 1981. And so um, when Rollins blamed it on leadership and corruption, later on, he, like I said, he found out it was not just corruption, but it was all these global and other historical factors. And then he never admitted to it, but of course people uh, politicize it. But the fact of the matter is then because he knew that without going back to the same colonial people, we would not survive because the economy was about to collapse in the 80s. That is why he turned to the IMF and the World Bank and then went, sent us into the economic reforms mm -hmm. program. And that sent us further into unemployment, poverty and where we are right now mm -hmm. because in combination of it, we had to change our political systems as well in order to qualify for IMF assistance. I know that you're going to be talking, so I'll keep quiet. Right. I'll, I'll come to you, Louise. And, and, uh, but before I do that, Akusia, you have made some fundamental points here, saying that it's quite simplistic to say that and perhaps the issues that Ghanaians are calling for the government to fix cannot mm -hmm. be blamed on leadership entirely. You mm -hmm. cite the example of being a happened from our colonial time after independence and also of course economic forces and the likes playing out agreed but is this not a reason why we voted for leaders we know that we cannot separate you know people's habits from politics yes we agree we know people are naturally born bad like A.K. Mensa has in, in one of his quotes so is, is it not the reason why we, we have elected these people to fix some of these problems for us. And so are we not justified if Ghanaians are calling on the leaders to fix it? Because we cannot separate people from, from their habits and the kind of politics that, that they play. So are they not justified? And, and you do that in a minute or two, so I go to Louise. Um, I'd, there's nothing wrong with calling for us to make the system better. I will summarize this, you said in a minute, by saying, nation built again they're claiming system my understanding of system is a system is a collection of multiple components a system is not a person a system is not a leader a system is all of us put together and so we are interdependent in the system so to me you cannot separate the people how they vote 
you cannot uh, absolve the people of responsibility and accountability from the leaders they put into power. We know that our political system is monetized. And so people, when people accept, rather than assessing people's merit, people assessing people on merit, assessing people on character, and then they vote for the person because of their tribe or whatever, or their church member or somebody they liked, and, and vote that way, they're equally accountable. They selected the type of leader and they deserve it. In summary, I'd like to tell you that uh, leadership, uh, leadership, we are under a democratic society. Democratic society, even our government or political systems are made up of three branches. And so it is an administration or the executive is one of the three systems, even if you want to separate the individuals or the population from the mm -hmm. political systems. So if you're talking about one administration and you, you may be having a parliamentarian who has probably served 20 years, his service is actually lasting longer than eight year administration. There is a reason why we have three branches of government that are part of the political system. Mm -hmm. The political system are tied to the economic system. It is also tied to the social system. And then we have multiple levels of government in the country. If you forget about the political, the modern political system, the chief science institution is a form of government within our country there, all right? So to me, all these other factors have to be looked at. Um, you said that we have to hold these leaders accountable, what have you. Yes, we have to, but there's a limit. They only can do so much. And so to me, to just it's like scraping the surface and, and ignoring the other part of the we'll system. Come to, I'll you. come to ask you about the limit that you feel leaders have, and of course, also the role of citizens have in um, you know, fixing the country and also fixing our attitudes to, together. Thank you very no much, problem. Akosia for that insightful input. So I turn my attention to you, Louis. And um, sorry that I have just decided to box both of you. So I boxed Akosia into that, um, that the view that says that we should fix our attitudes first because of the things I had seen her write on, on Facebook. I know you on a very personal level and I, I want to box you also into, in, into that view that says that we need to fix the country first. So it's the responsibility of, of our leaders. Listening to Akosia saying that we cannot blame it on them. We should rather look at our colonial history. We should also look at economic forces and our own attitudes of, pot of politicization of everything. Why do you still hold, do you still hold the view that we need to fix the country first? And with that, it's going to translate into fixing ourselves and why? Okay. Thank you, Evans. Uh, so I would like to state some uh, common ground that I have with uh, Kusia. So I agree that we have to identify the problems. I'm reading from the sheet because I took some notes. And I also agree that it, it's, um, we can do both at the same time. You know, we, it doesn't have to be, one shouldn't be the first whilst we wait you know, for the first action to be complete before we do the, the other. So what I, what I mean is, we don't have to wait for people to fix the country before we also fix ourselves. So we don't have to wait to fix ourselves before the country is also fixed. And I also agree that it's um, fix the country may sound simple. I actually agree that it's a simple statement. Um, but then we, um, I come to the parts that I disagree with. So first she said uh, um, you know, about the fact that there is some um, level of indiscipline in our training um, in Ghana. This, I disagree um, um, because we, I think, at least I know uh, quite a few um, Ghanaians who are trained in Ghana who are abroad and um, the structures in place there allow them to exhibit very different behaviors which ultimately um, puts them on a, a better, um, or maybe on a level of, of success. And they know, at least I know, and I'm sure if, if you may agree with me that um, there are certain successes that we are able to have in foreign countries that we would not be able to have in our home country, no matter how disciplined we are. So, if, I mean, if we are indisciplined, um, we would not be able to 
come to a Western country and do what we want to do because, you know, we are indisciplined. So this is something that I disagree with. And also, I just want to make a comment about the fact that it's a simplistic um, um, you know, statement. It is simple because I, I also agree that the issue is complex. And when it's complex, we have to make it simple so that we move forward. And it's also the reason we have a representative democracy. So the whole idea of democracy is you know, a government for the people. And because we, it would be impossible you know, structurally to have every single um, adult, adult in Ghana you know, to help, to make, to play an active role in ruling the government, in ruling the uh, country. That's why we elect leaders. So we give our trust, we give the power to them to represent us, and do what is good for us. So this is why it's, we know it's complex and we try to simplify it by electing leaders. So we give them the power. And we try to, so it's a, it's a way of simplifying it. And that is why if we feel, you know, the people feel that there are issues, it is right to actually put it on the doorstep of the leaders because it was already complex. That's why we, we, we elected the leaders. You know, they were not, um, um, a democracy is not like a chieftaincy in Ghana, where you actually, um, I mean, there's a, there's a word for it. You are arrested to be a chief. You, you know, sometimes you don't want to be the chief, but you have to be the chief. It's not like this. It's something that you, you go, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crown that you, you, it's put on you, knowing very well the responsibilities at stake. Mm. And there are some other things that I, so, I mean, that is it. So that's why I think, that's why I believe that, um, the, the responsibility lies on the leaders. Another thing that I disagree with is that, um, you know, corruption did not start post um, independence. It's corruption kind of, is a, hum it's it's a human kind of, trait. I think we, Adam, like we say, <laughs> like this is what Kofor said it's a, it's a human um, tendency. It's a human tendency. You know, we, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something that has to do with discipline. It's something that has to do with self-regulation. And um, because it's a human tendency, you need structures in place and not just structures that are, um, you, just, you just don't need structures, but you need structures that do the job. I give an example. So in Ghana, I know that, I mean, in Germany, I know that if I do not have um, a driver's license, it, 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 it's, there's a structure in place that would put that would discipline me if I drive without a license. In Ghana, I know there's a structure, but I know the structure is weak. I, as an individual, I know that people in Germany do not just drive um, with their life. Um, they, they don't drive because they have a license, because they want to drive because they have a license, but because there is a structure and they know that this structure is going to put them in their place. But in Ghana, this structure does not function that well. So people, I mean, People also want to do what is comfortable for them. They need a the motivation. They need an incentive, you know, to follow the structures that you know to be in line with the structures in place. And if this incentive is not there in terms of rules, punishment, reward, then people will not do it. So that is one thing. So one thing, like once again, um, corruption has always been there. It wasn't um, colonialism that actually taught us corruption. It has also been, there. and it's also another thing that I want to say about slavery. Um, it, it, it just didn't teach us. I mean, um, Professor Akusia Pebby's book about indigenous slavery in Ghana really spells it out. Mm. You know, it shows that this was something that we participated in fully. We, particip we even did it before the first European arrived. So it wasn't something that, the, um, that we acquired through slavery. It's something that has always been with us. And through democracy, we want to improve the situation by electing people that we trust to put some structures in place that would ameliorate the situation for us. So if we realize that the leaders that we put in place, uh, you know, we are not getting the result. I mean, you know, we, th we think that there's still some room for improvement in terms of you know, high cost of living, high mm. employment rate, you know, um, bad road infrastructure, um, poor, um, power supply, you know, this is why we put a leader there. I mean, an individual, a citizen 
cannot construct a road. I cannot um, um, produce power as an individual. I cannot, um, um, I cannot improve the, um, um, I cannot reduce the cost of living because I, I cannot, you know, I, I can't even make a law that would um, put a structure in place that would ensure that people um, without, or that a driver's license do not, you know, do not drive. I can't do this. It's a structure that has to be in place and we don't have that power. It's cumbersome to have individuals making this thing. I give another example in Ghana. Mm -hmm. If you remember, there was a time that we, um, the telecommunication networks, or I think it was the, I don't know the name, but they, they wanted all uh, SIM card holders to, you know, to be registered. They wanted all SIM cards to be registered. First, it was, it was really a calm call asking citizens to go and register. It wasn't compulsory and very few people did it. But then they put a structure in place and said, if you do not register it within this period, you would lose your um, number. And every, most people registered yes um, numbers. And I know all the people, I mean, um, I know that most people have their numbers registered. So I just give this example um, to, sh to show that citizens need incentive. And that is why they, they, lead, they elect the leaders. Mm -hmm. and that if leaders are able to put structures in place that work, that motivate um, citizens, it, it, would be, would, it would work better than, you know, not having, the, um, than having leaders who, for one reason or the other, are unable to put um, functioning structures in place. And this is what um, mm -hmm. fix the country, in my opinion, means. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Louise. And um, also, thanks for your insightful inputs here. So pretty much, you also began on a similar note, like Akosia, that I mean, both are mutually exclusive, except that I would say you hold the view that perhaps the leaders fixing the country comes first. And your main point, your main point is actually on the issue that once structures or proper structures are put in place, then this would help fix the attitudes of people. But you see, Akusia mentioned something, and this, this is my follow-up question to you. Akusia mentioned something that the structures are not made out of vacuum. They are made, they are made by the people in the country. And so you cited mm -hmm. the examples about people not, for example, not having license and, and driving. I mean, the structures that would check these people, the the they are the people themselves. It's, it's the people that raise these kinds of, of habits. So my question is, who creates the structure and, and who is supposed to follow these rules? Is it the leader who is supposed to go everywhere to make sure that people abide by these laws and these rules? Is she not justified when she says that the structure is ourselves and so we need to fix ourselves first before we perhaps think about these leaders who we raise them from the same society because we've not fixed our attitudes. What do you say to that? Well, the structure, I mean, we, this, yes, we are all part of the structure, but we need structures that function. We need rules. We need, um, we need, we need a framework in place. He gave the example, I mean, still about the example of um, driving. I can't, you know, if we have, if, a quarter of the population of Ghana cannot encourage motorists or cannot even ensure, you know, these are normal citizens, cannot ensure that um, drivers are you know, um, um, driving according to the speed limit, speed mm. limit, or possess a driver's license. We, we can't do this because no, you would, you would, no one is going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. We would have to go to all the households, talk to them about this. However, if there's a structure in place that says that, well, you know, now this is the this is the rule. If you if you are um, caught, if you drive without a license and you are you are caught, you are going to pay this fine. And then we start doing it for a couple of weeks. There will be a lot of you. You would I I I mean this could also be a thought experiment. Don't you think that there will be a lot of people flock into the um 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 licensing authority to you know get a genuine license to drive with mm. this would work in a matter of weeks so this is and the citizen cannot do this you know this is it's a lot of work for a citizen yeah. to do this 
But the moment this, you, you have this structure in place, we would all comply with this. And I give the example that you would find very few Ghanaians in Western countries driving without a license. I mean, they know what is at stake because they know that there's a structure. Mm. But why is that this same individual takes a plane during Christmas, comes to Ghana, doesn't have a license, you know, drive and then grabs the car of a friend and drives it. Why? Why do you think that you can behave in one way in country A and another way in country B? Because you know there's no structure in country B, country B to really you know, regulate your behavior. So it's the same individual, but it's like here in, in maybe in country A, because of the structure in place, there's a different behavior. In country B, because the structure is also different, there's also another behavior. So mm. you, human beings need, we need a structure. And that's why we put the leaders there, put those structures in place so that we would comply. Points this well made. Thank you very much, um, Louis. I come back to you, Akosia, and um, we make this also in some few minutes so that we come to the next round where we look at the way forward as, as a nation, even if we both, all of us here, agree that these fixing the country or fixing our attitudes, they are mutually exclusive. And so these should happen together. But it's important to address some of the things that Louis has said. So for example, like Louis began with the fact that it is not as if Ghanaians are indisciplined, but it's just because the systems do not work. The same Ghanaians, when they travel from Ghana to Canada where you are, or to Germany where we are, or to the, uh, to, to, to wherever, any of these advanced countries where the systems work, you realize that they are very disciplined. And like I said, I know you would disagree, but it's always said that human beings naturally are bad. I mean, not all human beings, but trust me, people would want to take advantage of any system. Louis also mentioned the fact that it's not as if people know driving without a license is, 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 is not good. They know it's bad. The only thing they are doing that is they are taking advantage of the weak enforcement um, that, that we have in the country. So are we not justified if we say that this is why we've elected leaders to make sure that the systems work for us? So it's not a case that we are just indisciplined. We all follow the rules here because we are scared that if we do not, it's, it's, we're going to be caught up with the law without fear or, or favor. So my question is, from what Louis said, why should citizens you know, have a role to play in all this? Because in your earlier submission, you seem to emphasize the point that we need to play a major role in this. Why should we play a role when we have given the power to the leaders to fix our attitudes for us, if I should put it this way? On what basis should we, should we play a role in fixing our own attitudes? You do that in some few three, four minutes, and I ask you some questions that I've received via Facebook here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I agree to some extent, and I would like to emphasize that I'm not saying, I'm not the one advocating one or the other. I just okay. feel they work together, all right? I also feel the people are responsible for the leaders they elect, and we shouldn't forget that. And mm -hmm. so we deserve the kind of leaders we elect because we elected them. If you are electing people, then you should know that the person is being elected on merit. If you accept money and you elect, some, you elect somebody for that reason, you are responsible and equally accountable as accountable as the leader. Okay, that's point number one. What, it, what constitutes a nation building? A nation building, these are the major elements of it, a process where people with diverse origin, histories, languages, culture, and religion come together with a unified constitution and legal dispensation, all right? These people have a shared goal. So one of the major pillars of a country to develop or de advance or build their nation is once and foremost, unity one tradition, one commonality language. When you look at us around there, are we unified? Most people are more loyal to their tribal groups or ethnic groups than the nation. People identify as Ashanti 
or a Christian or whatever first before Guinean, all right? And, and as you can see, people also vote by ethnicity more than based on national uh, uh, identity. So I would hold citizens accountable in that way. They are indirectly accountable or directly, however you may see it, for the leaders they select. So that is why I will not exclude them. Okay, most definitions of nation building bring in uniform, uniformity, homogeneity, and, and, and so we have to have it. Without that unified front, forget it. So, so the structures, who makes up the structure? The structure are the people that make up the structure. The people elect the leaders, all right? So if you elect leaders that are based on divisions, you are bound to fail, okay? And you elected based on your corrupt practices of voting, corrupt practices, so, so you are participating in the corruption. And then you elected the leaders based on favoritism, okay? Not a unified front. I'll tell you what, in the 1860s, France mm. and Italy, I'm using those two countries as an example, they had countries outside of France, for example, outside of the big cities, not, not uh, less than a few people spoke French. The leaders made up their point to make everybody speak French. The same way in, 18, in the 1860s, less than 10%, or let's even be generous, about 10% of Italians spoke the word called Italian. Many people spoke different dialects. Many people had different religions and stuff. They made a uniform. Bring that to Ghana. They, we don't even want to agree. We are very comfortable using the white man's language. We cannot even agree to use our own language. We don't have a tradition. And, and it doesn't matter what anybody says. You cannot ignore our colonial history. You cannot ignore the fact that our traditions are, are destroyed. You cannot um, um, uh, ignore the fact that our political systems our educational systems, our manner of uh, a lot of it is also based on those same colonial structures. So our main history is even distorted. And then we haven't made any effort to, to even fix it. And before we begin to even talk about fix the sin, fix whatever that is, we need to begin to, in my mind, identify the root causes of it before we even begin to just, again, start from the middle of it and starting to want to solve it. And so the root causes, and, and uh, my colleague here talked about corruption didn't start about um, ab from, 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 from independence and what have you, people say Adam and what have you. Well, society has, has, has grown beyond Adam, so I will not start with Adam. I'll start with billions of years ago, yes. I would not say we are born bad. I would not say that because when a child is born, a child doesn't know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. The child learns their behaviors in the society in which they are. I would also disagree that in Canada here, police, there was just a few people that the law actually catch doing the wrong thing. The majority of the people are self-regulating. So to me, it comes back to the very foundation of our society. And so we want to be policed to be able to put stuff in the garbage. We want to be policed. And Ghana, they always talk about law enforcement. Yes, law enforcement, good stretches. I do agree that good stretches are good. But my son is actually interrupted. Uh, so, so here, most people, uh, the, the obeying rules and regulating yourself, it is part of the social norm. Also, I would like to say that we have traditions, we have different forms of government existing in our society that play on it. These same people advocating for change. A couple of weeks ago, I saw them rally. When somebody did something wrong, they all rallied to have the person released. I have seen people camped out at a police station when the laws are being enforced. And so the divisions I started with, the ethnic division, political, ethnic, uh, uh, what is that called? Ethnic politics they play there, plays a role. So it's like the law, they bring something new, as long as it doesn't affect my party member, party bugger, or my, my ethnic group, I'm very well for it. When it affects them, we camp out. So we have all these, and that contributes towards the weak central government in terms of them doing their job. I know I'm all over the map, but I would like to say I will not absolve the citizens from playing a role, for one, for the way they vote, 
Number two, the way they raise children, because uh, you need to, we need to have a society whereby we teach children right from the get-go about responsible behavior. Ghana does not even have the resources to police everybody. I believe that the structures, yes, they have to be strong. But when we have everybody else sabotaging the system, I don't know how Ghana can make money to be able to police everybody, all right? When we are deciding conscientiously to evade taxes, I don't know where they're gonna find the money to be able to establish the systems we want. And so if we are ready to call for change, then we should be ready to be able to, to also start to support the very government because we cannot sabotage the system whereby we're calling for a change. Whenever I start to say I don't want it, I should be prepared not to drive without a driver's license, not to accept a bribe or not to do the wrong thing or to show up at work on time. I should not be saying something and be doing something else. Yes, I should call for a government for, in my mind, I should have the moral authority when I'm also prepared to also take responsibility. So in my mind, citizens have their responsibility as well as the leaders. So yes, leadership has a role and I'm not, I'm not absolving them, yeah. but I also think citizens equally have a responsibility. If you're a citizen, you have a privilege to be a citizen, but you have a responsibility to do the right thing also, or to vote right, vote responsibly, and also to hold yourself accountable. You cannot be saying something else and doing something else in my mind. Thank interesting, you. Interesting insights out there, Akosia. And so pretty much still with the point that you're not absorbing leaders, neither are you also absorbing the role of citizens, but you even hold their roles to be more important in trying to build a particular system and structure that that we want. You mentioned something which is quite interesting, issues around self-regulation. Right? Let me be a bit simplistic here. I mean, in, the, in, in our part of the world, self-regulation I know is very important in Europe and in the Americas, we know they do self-regulation a lot by their own people because of how they've been trained from home and, and the likes. Don't you think that we are justified if we say leaders should fix the country because we are not yet there? Self-regulation is not something that we, 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 we know so that it's still, the, that's why we voted these leaders, we've given them our power to be able not to just regulate us, but also to help us to self-regulate. And so if we come back to them to tell them that they should fix the system, we, we are absolutely right. I, I guess this is my, this is my, no, it's still, still talk, so I'll come back to you, because you mentioned something around self-regulation. Oh, is that for I just want to get her uh, thoughts on that. I'm is that my question? Yes. Don't you okay. think that with the self-regulation, I mean, we are a people that we've not been trained to self-regulate ourselves. And so we would still need leaders to be able to champion the path of regulating us before we get to this self-regulation. I guess they also started from somewhere before getting there. And so we are right if we call on leaders to fix the country and we think that by so doing, perhaps we would be able to imbibe self-regulation into ourselves. Yeah, self-regulating and, and uh, personal responsibility. I think it has to be started right from the get-go about teaching children right from the get-go that they're responsible for their wrong behavior. And so, so yes, the system has to be there to sanction people for wrongdoing. But at the same time, we should teach children so they are less likely to break the rules. Mm. So it, because ru the rule of law should be part of society governance. And so when, when people have already been taught to self-regulate, it limits the government's responsibility in terms of going around trying to help people, police people around to behave because they already incorporated uh, or inculcated that into their habitual life. And so then you don't need policing all the time because policing is very expensive. Personal responsibility also. In our society, they blame people for everything they do. That is one problem. Uh, uh, everything is a witch. My grandmother, my mother, uh, uh, and then it's taught. And that comes back to the fact that the systems, when we're talking about it, the system has different components. Our school system is part of it. Mm. People said top down. The teacher talks, you cannot disagree. And that is part of the reason, as you know, me speaking like this, Guineans get, take it personal and then they attack you personally because you know what? They don't understand debate. They don't, I can disagree with Mr. Amprako 
but it's the substance I disagree and I should tell him why I disagree with him. It's got Absolutely. nothing to do with this person. But Guineans will hate you for disagreeing because they've been taught in a linear fashion that everybody has to think that way. The educational system is part of it. Our parenting style is part of it. You do not challenge your parents. You, and so it goes across. And that is why I said to, ta to, to tackle or to attack the leaders alone is unfair because it's like ignoring all the other components that play a role in our system of the churches, their parenting style, our cultural system, that Absolutely. is top down you yeah. can't challenge nobody mm -hmm. and so those things play a role in our behavior and our conduct Thank therefore we grow much. up my way or the highway i say this you disagree with me you are my enemy and so i wouldn't even talk to you because you are from a different orientation so um i don't know whether i answered the question but i equally feel the system is so complex so in my mind different components of a system have to be tackled we will so, come to that in the in the very final round where we look at these different components that you're talking about. I know you've already touched on a few things, the way we vote, the, how we raise our children and the like. So we'll look at these things when we get to the very final questioning of how to fix ourselves and also how we expect our leaders to fix the country so that these students are mutually exclusive, as you said. Before I come to you, uh, I'd like to read some few messages one from Abraham says, thanks for your in-depth knowledge of your resource persons. Jessica Mprako says, we vote for leaders to lead, not to pinpoint flaws in our attitude alone. And then Hustin Emanuel says, Ghana's constitution is the most pressing issue that needs to be addressed. Politicians and holders of Article 71 are now the main beneficiaries of the constitution. For example, an MP received over 6 billion Ghana CDs in ex gratia and multiplied it by 275 MPs, people's attitudes would change if the constitution is, is fixed. Well, with the issue of ex gratia, I think uh, some George has offered some explanations. They probably don't want to call it ex gratia. It's a top up of their salaries that they do not receive. But he's also calling for the constitution to be fixed. And so we fix the country first before our attitudes are fixed also. AK Mensa has something for you, Akusia. He says, don't you think we have gone past issues of colonialism and, the, and that leadership at the top supersedes all. When a football team fails to perform, it is the coach that gets blamed and gets sacked. When students fail in examinations, it is the teacher in question that gets blamed. In the, in the system equation, it is the leader dri that drives the car. And when he goes the wrong direction, the whole boat sinks with, with people. Akusia speaks about people sabotaging the system. Good. How come our laws don't bite on such individuals that sabotage the system. And I don't know whether Akosia would want to react to what AK said in just a minute or two. Okay. Or what I, I thought maybe you were going to let me all right. let me, uh, let me, let me talk all right. because let I'm me, sure he's ready to respond to some to of my assessments. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. I mean, it's, it's up to you. I can still, AK uh, is my buddy. I, I can still come back. Yeah, and I'll, I'll come I to that. Not forget Very it. Well. So Very well. Talk, and and that's what Donko Michael or Sai says, fix both for now. That's what we need for a better Ghana. I guess that's exactly what we are going to do in the very last round to see how we can fix both. And that's what our guests here are also calling for. Michael Edujenfi also says, the main issue is what Akusia is discussing, divisions. The country is so much divided along many lines, which makes law enforcement so difficult. So a self-regulation and or central government regulation, this perhaps is what is needed. Anyway, I will read the other messages. So let me come to you, um, Mr. Amproko, so that we can end the debate, whether fixing ourselves first or fixing the, the, the country first. Then we can zoom into the second round, the very last one, where we look at what to do. Akusia has already touched on a few things that we need to do in order to fix ourselves, but we'd also seek views from how leaders could also fix the, the country. But Akusia has said a lot, you know, not absorbing leaders from their responsibility though, but the major role she feels lies with citizens. And I, I just wanted to quote something that John Kennedy said. He, he says that citizens, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. She talked about self-regulation and she made the point that in Canada where she is, it is not as if the laws, of course the laws do work, but most of the, the 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 
the, the laws do not catch up with a lot of people simply because they self-regulate themselves. And so if perhaps we agree with what F. Kennedy said, if all of us would place the country first and not do things along party lines, along ethnic lines, and then always realize that it is the country first before we think about what we should think about what we can do for the country than what the country can do for us first. Don't you think that then those who are also calling for fix yourselves first, they are justified because once we do that, because we form the system, and so once we fix ourselves automatically, the country fixes. Well, what, what do you say to that? Okay, um, maybe I, you give me a couple of seconds. I would lie if I say it's a couple of seconds to uh, also react to some things that, uh, as I said, and also it's not a debate. I, I think it's a conversation. Um, a debate is a bit combative. Sure. So, I well, common ground once again. I, I concede that um, the point that people elect, I mean, some people, I wouldn't say all people, but some Ghanaians um, elect people based on certain traits. You know, can be ethnic, could be physical appearance, yeah. could be religion. <laughs> and uh, I also concede that, you know, citizens should take responsibility. I think I already said this the first time. And this, this, uh, the, the other thing, I mean, you, you um, Evans, you said, uh, you know, self-regulation is, uh, um, is something that we have a problem as a group, I disagree. Mm. Self-regulation, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a complicated thing for all humans. Mm. Um, the, the, if there was, what there's one, I don't know if, yeah, Canadian, Canadian, um, government official who, there was one Canadian government official who in the 90s um, shoplifted, you know, you know, he couldn't regulate himself. So I just say this so that we know that this is something that human beings struggle with. And like, um, normally when we get into adulthood, we are able to control ourselves better, but we of course can't do it very well. And, and so these are some of the things that I agree with. And I come, you know, uh, uh, Marcus here also said that, um, you know, we get the leaders we deserve. Fair point. And also that if we elect a leader who, you know, say um, that's something, you know, comes, and maybe that's something that we do not like, then we know it was our bad choice. But at this point, I would also want to point out that um, if this may be true, however, it's also one of the weaknesses in democracy. So for example, if I want to lead, you know, hmm. be the president and I say, I'm going to do A, B, C, D. I mean, how do you know? No one knows the future. So you, you have to take my word for it that I'm going to do A, B, C, D. You trust me and I, you, I get the vote and I come and I do X, Y, Z. Or I don't even do anything. Oh yeah, which is very different from A, B, C, D. You know, you cannot really blame the electorate or the citizen who elected me because I said I was going to do ABCD. How was a citizen going to know that, well, it wasn't going to be ABCD, but it was going to be XYZ? So this is one, um, um, one thing. And, you know, when something like this happens, then it's up to the um, citizens to also you know, remind um, the leaders that, you know, this was what you told us you were going to do. But this is the situation now, you know, what, what is happening? Why is it so? And I believe that this is one of the, um, this is one of the things that drive the fix the country um, campaign, you know, to remind the leaders that this is not what you said you were going to do. And another uh, thing that Akusia said, you know, about the unified front, you know, Yes, uh, there are many countries that had different, uh, some that had different dialects and over time, it took several, you know, many centuries or maybe thousands, you know, millennia to have this unified front, you know, have one uh, language. But fortunately or unfortunately, it's not the case in many parts of Africa. There are several languages spoken. And I don't think we, we, we have the energy and the resources to, um, 
make sure that we all speak one language. And I don't think it's also necessary. We can find a different language. Yes, one may argue that it's a colonial language, but um, we can also use it for good since we can't shed it off easily. So we can go under this language to have a unified front. And a unified front does not necessarily mean one language. You know, it could also be one um, group of people with one, um, you know, with some common, um, um, I don't want to say features, but you know, something common between them, you know, the vision going forward. So this is, even though we don't, we may seem, um, um, as, you know, it seems as if we are not unified because we don't have lang one language. It, it, that having a language does not necessarily mean unity. You know, you can, um, as a joke, you can all, you can imagine um, a married couple speaking the same language. It does not necessarily mean they are unified. It does not mean necessarily mean they have unity. It doesn't work this way. So this is also one thing. And I also wanted to talk about taxes. You know, because as like I said. Other places, people are not, you know, we don't have the resources to police and people, but pay their taxes, you know, I, but it's not really like the people pay their taxes because they are very happy to pay their taxes because they know what's going to happen if they don't pay their taxes. You know that there would be a letter I and mean, you know you have to respond to that letter. You know, if you don't pay it, it's, I mean, that that's, was what I was, I talked about in my uh, um, earlier submission that there's an incentive to pay the tax which is you know your peace of mind so then people do it it's not that it's not like they want to do it because they are special or they love the country so much it's it's the it's the knowledge that something um that you would be uncomfortable you know you would have to it would be very bureaucratic to get it to get it um, fixed and that's why people pay their taxes in certain countries it's not out of pleasure mm. okay and you know, we we were to, also on self-regulation. You know about the citizen. I I just want to. It may it may sound like a mean um, argument, but imagine a um, 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 a woman in labor in some part of Ghana. You know, in a very rural part with bad roads. How is this woman going to self-regulate her labor when the road connection? from her place of residence to the hospital is, you know, is bad, or there's no, even no hospital. How are you going to self-regulate this? How are you going to be responsible as, an, as a citizen you know, in this state? It, it, it doesn't work at this point. So I just want to say this to show that on, on another level, it's, very, it's that complicated and we need the leader to actually take that, you know, put the structure in place so that person who is in labor, for example, can visit the nearest maternity uh, ward to have her uh, needs met, you know, to be taken care of. Yeah, so this is what I wanted to you know, react to. Now, perhaps you would like to remind me of your question. Then. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Louise, for your insightful input as well. I think we might go on and on whether to fix first or to fix our attitudes. I think it's quite clear here that both are you know, mutually exclusive and they should be done uh, together. And so while we fix our country, we should also fix our attitude uh, first. And Louis, you have made still coming back to the fact that once the systems work very well, once the structures are put in place, automatically people will fix, fix them themselves. But I just wanted to follow up with with one question and with the issue that Akosia raised um, with, with voting and you know people voting for bad leaders and uh, I think she made one point that the same people take bribe you know people actually demand for 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 money before they vote for people there are some of the things the laws are there you you give an example of a Canadian shop lifting i mean yes this this can be found in in other countries but perhaps the question is how many people in canada would want to want to do that the argument would be that because the systems do work but also people do self-regulate themselves they know this is the right thing to do a Ghanaian knows the right thing to do is not to cheat a fellow Ghanaian, but they take delight in doing that and later they still blame it on 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 the government. What do you say to that? I mean, people will take bribe and later when leaders also take bribe, 
they, 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 they want to blame the leaders for getting that we raised these leaders together. The leaders were not raised outside the country or raised elsewhere. And so we need to fix our attitude first. And by so doing, the society would automatically fix. Why don't you agree? Well, when, when you say I don't agree, that, you know, it's mm. not that I, we have a role to play. Exactly. That's one thing, we have a role to play. And that this conversation should be had in every, I mean, maybe in every home, you know, what we can do, what is the way forward. We should have this conversation on a, you know, on a, on a personal level on, you know, among families so that we spread this idea. This is something that I totally agree. All right. That we have to do. And what, I mean, with the, you still, I, I come back to the, 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 the leaders that you still need a structure. Mm -hmm. While this conversation is going on, we still need the lead because we can't. For, so, for example, we would have to wait to you know that you know the children under five will get this education in you know, and then when so in twenty five years when they are thirty, they can take take over. Then we would have to wait. But what do we do whilst the conversation is going on? We need the leaders to put the structure in place. And I I looked up the the name of the Canadian um, uh, politician who shoplifted spend spend Robinson and. Well, he had to face the repercussions for this because there was a structure in place that would make sure that his lack of self-regulation is going to be punished. Mm. So one would, I mean, just imagine, I don't you know how this could happen. I mean, if this could happen, um, is this effective in our country with a leader? Um, I mean, I would, I would want to believe that if, some, if this had happened in Ghana, you know, the, lead, the leader would say, well, you know, I would resign because this happened. But you know, we know that nothing is going to happen. Really, nothing. We know nothing would happen. I mean, um, I digress. But take um, um, take for instance the journalist who was abused the, 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 um, by the national security operatives. We both know that they know that nothing will happen to them. There is no structure in place. Can you just imagine? You know, another thought experiment. Just imagine that this had happened to a journalist in the U.S. in Canada. Germany, everyone's going to be fired. Mm. Everyone, and everyone so. is going to be fired. So this is a structure that's in place, making sure people fall in line. But you know, we can talk about this, and we don't know the future. But there's one, future, there's one thing that I'm very confident of that you know, with this example, you know, there's, that there's no structure in place to make sure that people would fall in line. Um, such you know, the people who actually abused this journalist. Nothing will happen to them because there's no structure in place. Thank you very much. And it's much. not, I just want to be also clear, it's not political. It's not because of party A or party B. Not if it's the cause of the structure. So for me, I would wish that the leaders come, they try to reinforce the structure. Maybe we let's do it brick by brick, you know, brick by brick. We'll do that. Going to I, 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 I think that would be my last question. I've just okay. been, attention has been drawn that we, we have, um, we have some few minutes, but I just want to read some messages. Then I come to you, Akosia, to wrap up, to tell us that since building a nation, we need a unified front, like you said. What's the way forward? You've already mentioned a few things that we need to do to fix ourselves. Perhaps you could emphasize them and then also tell us what leaders are expected to do. Because it's also true that, like both of you have agreed, it's, they have to work hand in hand. I mean, you cannot say, let's fix this and leave the other. So AK Mensa again says, how come the same Ghanaian behave differently when they travel outside? Don't you think, Akosia, that the system under a functioning leadership coerces obstinate citizens and followers to obey and do what's right? Jesse also says, true, in Ghana, an outdoor is never wrong. We dare not correct an outdoor when he or she is. Michael um, Prakos says, fixing should be integral, true, proper education, attitudinal change, etc. Thanks. These are very wonderful comments out here. And I think it adds to the way to build our nation forward, looking at fixing ourselves and at the same time also fixing the country by leaders. Emmanuel also says, politicians know the problems facing the ordinary citizens, but are afraid of losing elections. So won't fix it. Accountability is conspicuously missing in the narrative. Ghana, we love drama. And then the last one from Emmanuel Toknubodaku says, so bottom line, the government should fix the country. In the political stooges 
should stop being led by their stomachs and parochial interests. So, Akosia, the way forward, I, I would say that I know you would have loved to rebut to a few of the things that perhaps Louis said, but let, let's do this. I think we have a common ground here. Both of all of us, most Ghanaians, agree that we should fix this. And like Louis said, this is not what we also do. On SEPSA talk, we do not necessarily pitch one political party against the other. Calling for the country to be fixed necessarily should or would not end with just this administration. It's something that Ghanaians have yearned for it, and we think it's time that we look at these things. So building a nation, what would you say should be done in order to fix ourselves and fix the country simultaneously? Well, um, building a nation, okay, can mean that uh, building a collapsed nation and I say building a functioning state whereby uh, one a functioning state never existed. That also involves a government policies aimed at creating a strong sense of national identity. And, and, and the goal of nation building is to unify the people within the country so that it remains politically viable and stable for a long time. And you know, um, I will reiterate that you cannot separate the two because it is the people that make up a nation. Also, I think Lewis had talked about uh, um, uh, relating um, a pregnant woman and roads and what have you. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm asking uh, citizens to build an uh, infrastructure. Nation building has two components. You will nation building and you will state building. State building, yeah, the building of institutions you know, to strengthen them to be useful. And I believe that's what uh, a lot of the people when they're talking about systems, that's what they're talking about. Um, at a deeper level, you know, uh, uh, building a nation you know, involves different ethnic groups in one, morphing them into one identity. Um, me, 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 overall, no, me, there may be one problem with the citizens, and it's that I cannot even begin to imagine, say, we are citizens. Now, but you just remove yourself from responsibility. Now, you change you, the leaders, you, you, you. It's almost like having a marital problem and then starting to give it all to your, your spouse. The thing is, are you speaking to you? Sorry. Perhaps the other way around. Yes, yes, yes. So I was going to speak to you. No, wait, wait, maybe I should give you one credit also on SEPSA talk. I, I remember you were perhaps part of a group of people or even, I mean, solely pushed for the government to announce the, when, when we had this COVID-19 briefing by the government, mm -hmm. Akusia was one person who, you know, championed that the government should also translate the English announcement into Chi and Ga. That's how come we saw Ekufuadu. Uh, doing that in Chile. Well, shortly after, I went to write under his post out. that it has to be communicated yeah, locally. Never mind, but anyway. Okay. okay, anyway, in summary, it's like pointing figures at one and absolving yourself of, of individual responsibility. Um, citing one example of a Canadian politician, that is one off, okay? And yes, the system is in place to punish, but there were two mechanisms for regulating behavior. As Louis rightfully said, there is an incentive and there is a sanctioning, all right? And you know, incentives and it's self-regulating. And like I can tell you, yeah, uh, in, in Canada here, the police station is normally located in the troubled neighborhood. It is not located in, uh, normally they look at the areas where crimes are and they're located there. It's the, the larger majority a society whereby they incorporated good behavior and good manners into their habit. Policing is not a major part of their life because they don't even expect that to happen. Therefore, it is very important to, to incorporate it into your upbringing. I do agree that Nippon, like other people, sorry uh, that I'm in, sort of inter, interspersing the, the languages. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of used to speaking to, like that locally. But anyway, the, what I wanted to say is that in summary, 
uniform you cannot build a nation without a, a harmony okay and throughout europe that's what they did you need to harmonize your people and through our millennium nation building has always rallied around having a common value if the other time i was asking what is the national value of guineans what is our national identity what is our guiding principle yes i, I know these are things i'm throwing out there the system has to work and what have you, but who is a system and what are the systems? We have multiple systems, we have political systems, we have social systems, and we have economic system. How do we merge the two? And then we, out of the political systems, it sounds to me the so-called uh, fix the country group, they're targeting one aspect of the system, administration, which is just one part, one component of the political system. They are absolving parliamentarians, they're absolving past political behavior, they're absolving part politicians and opposition who are equally, uh, uh, equal, play the role and continue to play a role in sabotaging the system functioning. And so when you do that, you make one play against the other. They are absolving the chiefs that play a big role the chiefs are the people. Who, how many times have you seen chiefs being punished in, in Ghana? And, and, and many of these same people yelling may fight tooth and nail to defend their chiefs if mm. the politician were to do anything. So to me, all this stuff I'm saying, and you see the same thing against the churches, all right? If the church member or pastor, a mm. Guinean pastor they hail as a god or a goddess, is being arrested, you see all of them rally because to them, the government dare not because that person is called by God. And so nobody touches them. So when you have different components of the system sabotaging, I don't know what the government is supposed to do. Here is not like that. We have a common front that we want it to work. And so if we were giving our power to the government, then we would stay back and, 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 and sort of retreat and leave our power because we've given our power to them to act. But how many times would you see the same people try to grab the power away uh, whenever it doesn't favor them? So that is why I hold the citizens accountable. So to me, if they want to go ahead and uh, or they really truly want to change, we would all commit to say, you know what, from now, if the police arrest me, uh, uh, the law has already caught me. If the police arrest my pastor, so be it. Arrest my chief, so be it. So then we all are given the power to the person we claim is the leader. But if we're going to be patching and suppressing and, and then chipping the power away, but at the same time put all the blame on them, I don't, I don't, I don't see the compatibility there Thank in you. my mind. I just feel the people like that, they're not ready to change. Thank we should rally around a common goal mm -hmm. that it's not working. And so we should all sit together and figure out how to resolve it rather than staying out and blaming one part and also taking ourselves out of the responsibility and just pointing fingers at somebody else and then essentially saying we didn't do anything and it's just the leader's fault. Yes, leaders have to put in infrastructure, reform the education and, and all that, build the roads and what have you, but we need to pay our taxes to make that happen. We need to actually also rally and support them we shouldn't be fighting right. them at the same time. That's right. conflicted in my mind. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I've been prompted that our time is far, far spent. And thanks for still staying with us, our fellow sub as I call them. And thank you, Akosia. So what you say pretty much is that we cannot separate the two. And so we all need to rally around a common goal and help fix the, the country. Now, Louis, with your concluding remark and the way forward in fixing ourselves and fixing the country but i just wanted to read some few questions that i have received you don't need to answer because we don't have time louis perhaps sepsa africa could look at some of the questions that akosia also raised who is the system i mean the different systems what are the different rules that are required by each individual in all of these systems so because edmund yabwa raises other fundamental questions what is the structure and a system is there laws, rules, putting police on the street? Can you give an example of such a structure to control misbehavior on the road? So this was more of a question directed to Louis, but I think we cannot exhaust that. We probably would have to come back again to look at <laughs> what system we are looking at and okay. who is this system? But your concluding remark, the way forward in our nation building, fixing ourselves and fixing the country. Thank you. Well, I think the conversation should go on. 
Um, so Ghanaians should have this conversation and they should still uh, continue to campaign um, for, um, to ask leaders to fix uh, the country whilst having conversation about how they can also, or what they can also do to improve um, the situation. You asked me a question I couldn't answer, but I would respond to it. It was about the Kennedy uh, quote and uh, ask not what you, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. In the, actually, um, um, in the last sentence of that long speech, uh, the speech that he made, he said, finally, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us. So he was saying us as the leaders, ask of us the same high standards of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. So comes back to the point that it's not something that, you know, one you can say, um, you know, fix the country or, you know, it's something that we all have to do. So yes, we have to ask the leaders to fix the country. We have to ask, put them on that high standard. This was a standard that um, they promised us, you know, and that's why we voted them in power. And uh, yes, um, um, fine. So this would be the, you know, uh, my final, statement. Any other thing would be a, a rebuttal, uh, which we do not thank have you. time. Thank you very much. Um, Akosha, thank you very much, Louis. It has been very interesting. The comments keep flowing in, but I would end with a few comments. I think we probably need a second part. I think I have very wonderful comments here, and I think most Ghanaians agree that we cannot separate the two. They are mutually exclusive, and so we need to you know, fix ourselves and at the same time fix the country. So Ike Mensah says, I like the argument by Louis Amprako that elsewhere where structures and leadership are functioning, people are responsible for their actions. They resign when they fail to deliver. A Wuku Goldman also says, attitudinal change is the way to go. And one Fred K. Dundere says, I'm enjoying the debate. It's what's a conversation, please. And then the very last comment to end the show would be from Michael Amproko. He says, to effectively fix the situation, the whole thought processes of Ghanaians would have to be overhauled. It is culturally hatched. A national problem can be likened to an elephant in the sitting room. Wow, that's really, really food for thought. Thanks so much, all of you fellow Subsidians, for the comments and the questions that you, you gave. So I also agree with one of the things that Michael Amprako said that it should be, the fixing should be an integral part of our education, our cultural system, and our upbringing. Like Akusia also said, we need to also raise our children in that way where they become responsible citizens. But until then, I think that our leaders and ourselves, we do have a role to play in fixing the country and fixing ourselves. Thank you very much, Louis. Thank you very much, Akusia, again. And I am Evans Apia Kisi, the host you. of Sepsa Talk. Do make time with us next week as we bring you another interesting discussion. Have a lovely evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Bye bye. Thank you. And Louis, nice meeting you. Bye bye. Nice meeting you. Bye bye.